Bratz, we've got a very big unboxing today and something totally new to me. This is a newer, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that, lighting kit, similar to what we've been using. So we've been using softbox lights this whole time with LED bulbs. These are now just LED kits, but they have diffusers in them. Normally this is gonna run you $216 on Amazon. I did get these on a flash sale for 170, so saved a little bit of money. The whole plan for these is now that we're using this space here for the studio, for unboxings, reviews, builds, other things like that. These are just gonna be to light up the green screen and me for mixed reality videos, streams, all that stuff. We're gonna take these out, we're gonna set them up. Might be a minute because this is a pretty small box for how big these are gonna end up being. We're gonna build these, check them out, and then we'll kind of compare them to the soft boxes, see how they are with temperature, with the lighting, and with uh, how bright they are. So let's open them up. Always have that small, sharp unboxing knife handy when you're gonna unbox something. The 2.4 gigahertz wireless remote and some books and crap. That actually comes way more nicely packaged than I expected. So each light comes in its own carrying bag, so it looks like they already package them in there. And then these are the light stands right here. Actually, these aren't gonna take much assembly at all. Open it up and it's got a nice styrofoam surrounding inside the case that holds it. Power adapter. I did not buy any batteries for these. You can get batteries for them. And from what I was reading about, they're actually similar to like camera batteries. So battery plates slide in here and then you can use these without plugging them in. I have no reason to use batteries for them, but if you were someone who did mobile photo shoots, that might be cool. Not something I'm gonna be using them for. These are metal plates here. These open up and it already has the diffuser in place. 660 LED bulbs inside of there. Diffuser plate just slides in and out. Real basic plastic. It's actually oddly has a protective film on it, which I'm glad I removed that because I would have left that on there. And who knows what if the heat would have done anything to that. And then without that there, you can actually see every individual LED here. And if you look at them, you can tell half of them look like they're kind of yellow and half of them look like they're kind of white. And then there is dials on the back, which we'll show you when we get these things up and running. One of the reasons I went for these more expensive models is because you actually have this screen back here. So then you can see what you're doing. And then you have the dials here where you change the temperature of the lighting. Let's get these set up real fast and check them out. I like how compact these are gonna be. Well, this part's kind of weird here. So to remove this diffusion layer, what I did was I pushed this down, but then to get it to pop back up, there's just a spot for your finger. You can adjust it to two different heights there to hold this in place. So it's not tight, it's got some slack to it. But then if you wanted to take that out again, you push that down and then you just have to make sure and do this. Otherwise that's gonna fall out if you lean this. We've got one remote control, no AAA batteries. I'm gonna knock them a point for that right there. I hate when stuff doesn't include the batteries you need. Obviously these aren't gonna include the big rechargeable batteries. No remote batteries and I gotta go find some AAAs. That's annoying. These are gonna be basic tripod stands if you've ever dealt with lights, certain mic stands, uh, they're gonna be pretty familiar, but basically you're just gonna open these up as wide as you need them. Good solid feeling stands, I like that. One weird thing about these, it just doesn't feel like there's like a good spot to grab them by. You kind of just have to play around with it. This here, you're gonna unscrew this till it's far enough that it's gonna reach onto here. And then you're just gonna slide this all the way on. Tighten that screw back down and it's on there. Actually, it feels like it fits pretty good. So like, it feels like it's intended to go onto this where like these soft boxes, when I put them together, it kind of sits on there and you have to really tighten the bolt because it feels like it'll wobble otherwise. 
This feels like it's obviously made for this and feels good, so I like that. A detail that's kind of weird here that I want to point out, they give you these traveling cases to carry the lights in, but it's only going to carry this part. It's not going to be like you can pack up this whole thing really easily and carry it, because you're going to be carrying these by hand. Other lighting kits that I've used, like these softboxes, they have space to fit everything in its one handle. This, you'd have two handles, one for each of the top pieces, and then you'd also have to carry this too. So it's not gonna be the most mobile thing to carry around. If you're looking to take this places, that might be a factor to consider. It's got an off, a one, and a two switch, and then it's got the dials to change the temperature. So we're just gonna go to number one. So I guess we are currently at 10%. Okay, so one switch controls how much power you're giving it, the other controls the temperature of the lights. So that's 5600K is the max, 3200K is the minimum, so that's gonna be as yellow as it can get. And then in reading reviews, people said you kinda want it right in the middle. 4500K was what people were liking for photography, but obviously you can change that depending on what you're looking for and the temperature of the light. Well, good news, upon turning this thing around where I can actually see with these lights facing it and not in the darkness, they actually do make it pretty clear here on the back what everything means. This shows you that this side is for battery, this side means you're on the power, and then you got everything on the readout up here. Battery off adapter, tells you where to plug, plug in your power adapter, so yeah. It's pretty straightforward when you can actually see back here, but if you're standing behind it in the darkness the first time you turn this on, you might get a little lost. Right now, it's hard to tell in here, but I can tell you right now, if you're comparing these to softbox lights, I don't think you're gonna be getting quite as much power out of it. What we'll do is we'll turn off the softbox on this side, We'll put this up against this and we'll kind of face each at the wall and kind of see how much light is actually coming from it. It definitely looks like to me we're getting less light out of it than we are from the softbox, which actually has three light bulbs in it. It doesn't even have the fourth light bulb in. So that's okay. I wasn't expecting these to be as good as the softboxes because these are really only for the green screen, but let's compare them side by side. We'll take a look. So right now you're seeing on your right side, the original soft boxes that we've been using for months in the unboxing. Granted, we were using them with one less light bulb. That's got three light bulbs out of four. It could have a fourth light bulb in there. And then on your left side over here, you're seeing the one newer 660 LED set to 5500K at 100% light. So definitely, even in my, in my vision, it seems like I'm getting a lot more light on this side. It does look like it's more well lit. It's diffusing really nicely. It's like spreading better. This one, it is pretty direct and I can feel that even now. I feel like it's glaring on this side of my face more. But again, our purpose here is for green screen. If you're a photographer and you're looking at this, trying to figure out which one, obviously you're probably gonna do way better with the softbox, but this is gonna be more compact, small, hopefully produce less heat and serve my purposes in the studio better. If you look at the shadows behind me, so this shadow you're seeing on this side is actually gonna be from the soft box over here. So that's pushing this way and producing a shadow and it's soft, it's not super noticeable. So if shadows are an issue, this is gonna give you a much harder shadow where you're looking at this, this is going this way, creating a very hard shadow. That actually may cause a slight bit of a problem when it comes to putting these in the studio because green screens, you don't want a lot of hard shadows. Hopefully having one on either side and they're mostly gonna be aiming at the green screen more than me. We shouldn't have too much issue with that, but we will test that as well. So the lights are in place. They are aimed towards the green screen, how we're gonna be using them, and we have the remote working. The first thing I wanna talk about is some of the odd choices of the remote here. On this remote, you've got a couple different settings. You've got the power button that only relates to the remote itself. If you leave this on, the remote will time out after a certain amount of time. It won't just stay on, but when you press that, it just turns off the remote. It does not turn off the lights. You got the mode button here, which allows you to change the channel that it's on. So let's say you had three sets of these lights. You could switch, you have two lights on channel three, two lights on channel four, and you can adjust them each by channel. You've got the color of the lights, so we can change the color temperature however we want to in use. So that's full yellow. It's transitioning up to the more blue or white light. And then 5500 is where I'm gonna be running this at most of the time. And then lastly, you have what is basically your only on off switch is your power up and power down. So if I wanna turn these off, I have to go all the way down to zero. And then to turn them up, I have to bring them up through each manual setting. So I was a little disappointed about that. I was really hoping that I could like press this button and it would turn them on and off, keep the same settings all the time. But for some reason, this is the only way to do it. We can take this all the way up to 100%. But what I noticed, especially when it gets up to 100, it seems like the shadows get a lot stronger. I will probably be running these mostly around 60%. Keep the shadows a little softer to help for the fact that then the chroma key won't freak out and suddenly you'll see my shadow show up. 
as we're using the green screen. They work great. It's awesome that the remote has all the functionality, but then of course, each one has buttons, knobs, and everything on the back that you could also run them from the light. So you don't have to have this remote. This will definitely be the way I'm using it. Like I said, my only real qualm is I wish I could just right now press a button and turn this remote off, but I can't turn off all the lights at the same time. The heat output seems to be very mild for these, especially compared to the soft boxes I was using, especially in the summer. Those were adding tons of heat. So this definitely will give less heat. So each light has leaf barn doors on them. So if you wanted to close these up and concentrate the light somewhat and aim them, for my purposes, these are just gonna stay open. These aren't really necessary. I even contemplated taking them off, but I won't bother doing that. They don't take up that much more space with them on. But if you were someone who wanted to get fancy and tighten these up, you can to a degree, but you can't like close all of it because they'll hit each other. You can mess with that. I'm not a photographer. I'm not gonna be using that function whatsoever. The stand is sturdy and solid. I really have no issues with these lights at all. I do wish they diffused a little more and you can get a diffuser that fits over the barn doors to really diffuse the light. But the one that it comes with will be sufficient for what we're using in this room. But if I was gonna be using these for unboxings or something, we would probably need a proper diffuser. I guess the main question is, are they worth it? Now, if I hadn't gotten these on a flash sale, I would have paid $220 for these. I would probably be having a little buyer's remorse. At 175 on the flash sale, I am feeling like it was much more of a better deal. Or if it had come with the battery packs and the charge that you need to run these remotely, that would have sweetened the deal too. It's not a bad price. I'm very happy with them, but I definitely think there's a lot of options out there. I would take a look through some other ones and really, really try it out, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. Find somewhere you can actually go look at these kind of lights in person and find out what you want in the lights. Talk to an expert. You may get these and they may not really work for your purpose, but for mine, they're fine. The price is okay. I'm gonna stick with them. I will leave a link in the description in case you like what you see and you wanna get a set, but I would definitely watch for a sale on them. I would not probably pay full price for these. If you have any more questions or if you've dealt with these lights, you have anything to let me know that I didn't know, tell me in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you about it. I wanna say thank you so much for hanging out with me and Libby today. She's just really being the cuddle kitty tonight, not letting me get up and do anything, but hey, that's all right with me. She's so cute. But thank you so much and I will see you in another reality. I want to say the biggest thank you to those of you who have become channel members and any of you who have ever been patrons of ours. Gallium VR, Chris Deputy, Legacy VR, Bagel, and a Fissy King Sloth, our current channel members. Our patrons, K27, Rocket Sauce 28, K Panda K, Fred Nepotebo, Ege Karatosh, Maddie's, Gallium VR, Orange VR, and Mr. Dodojo. Thank you so much, everyone, for supporting the channel.